Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Ms. Nwundu D.I.V.A. A Divine Inspired Vibrant the Anointed. We are on Season 8, Episode 3 of the Iyana Fix My Life Show. I don't have a whole lot to say before I get into the episode except for first go watch the episode yourself and then come on over here and we can hash it out and talk about our insights and our thoughts and our light bulbs that we had while watching the, the, the episode. I will go back to the episode for reference just to contextualize whatever I'm saying and sharing my thoughts but I suggest that you first go watch the episode yourself um, and if you want to see my thoughts uh, about this particular family which is uh, what is this the Jaws family I will put videos from last season 7 up here as I go along the video in the first five minutes of the video also go into the description box and check for the chapters slash timestamps if you want a quick navigation through the video I will break these up into about 15 20 minute uh, videos and then post them up in different parts so that they're not too long and you can watch them as a series over day anyway let me get into this week's episode season 8 episode 3 goodness this was a very long episode i don't know why they didn't break it up into two parts um that would have been uh, interesting you know it would have been a nice suspense situation for all of us but they didn't so the family starts out and they all come in except for the twins you remember there were twin girls there was the eldest daughter and then there were twin girls and then there was a uh, a, a young man and then a, a young lady um the twins aren't there so and then we also learned that there is actually a brother who's older than the elder sister out of all of everyone else that i just mentioned so there's another brother he's also not there but he comes in via you know skype or zoom or you know so it starts out and there's a heart on this on a board and this heart is broken into different little pieces and each piece represents the names of each member of the family um and for the twins there's nothing said there because they have not come back for ashley it says you know something to the effect of daddy less no support a black sheep of the family um for jamil which is the mother um is something that to the uh effect of codependent can't make informed decisions um and she didn't do the homework that was given to her uh by iyala from the last time that they were on the show for jordan who's the young the young boy 16 year old uh is it jordan yes it is jordan um you know <laughs> he says he's there for a check <laughs> I was like, what? But he says it's there for a check. I'm like, for what? What what service are you bringing? Um, um, but, you know, his thing was just to check on his triggers. What's on his piece of the heart is, okay, he's there to check on his triggers. And, you know, and then for Mark, who is the husband, Mark Senior. So there's a Mark Senior and a Mark Junior, which is the new... Uh, sibling that we learn of is that there's a Mark Jr. who's the firstborn of everybody. So there's a Mark Jr. that we get to meet in this episode that we did not meet last episode. So Mark Sr. says, um, you know, what's on his heart, heart piece is that, you know, he has this need to be needed, codependent. Uh, in a in a crisis, he needs to be needed. I guess he thrives in a crisis because then that means he's needed um, and that. You know he's unhappy and there's no has no sense of purpose because people who are codependent um they get their sense of purpose from being needed they get their sense of purpose of rendering other people in arrested development so that they can be your knight in shining armor and need you and be your stand in um and outside of that they don't know what their purpose is and that's what's on his piece that he has no purpose is unhappy He's in crisis and um, is has no has is a person that needs to be needed. Jaden, the youngest girl, um, on her card it says spoiled truth teller, 
magical child and protector. And then Dorothy, the grandmother, remember the one who said to Jaden, the youngest girl, I don't like you last time. And she was quickly cut off by Iyala, like, we're not doing that. Is that grandmother? So she comes this time with the family and what's on her heart piece, the family heart piece is untold story, favoritism, um, no filler, detachment. On Mark Jr.'s piece, which is the firstborn son of all of the children, it says, you know, family of drunks, uh, uncontrollable anger inherited from his father, Mark Sr. And that's the kind of thing that gets him in trouble. And he he's the, he's the sibling that walked away and left everything behind for his own protection. But first, before I get into this, I found it interesting and very um, useful in this episode that uh, Yana had the grandmother, Dorothy, watch um, the different processes and different conversations that she had with everyone because it would then illustrate to her that she is not uninvolved in everything that happens in the family dynamic, but that she is literally um, the origin of the trickle down. So whatever brokenness that she had, it's trickling down through her family in the form of patterns, in the form of pathology, and that it comes from her. Yana has her watch her different conversations with uh, different members of the family um, so that she can actually see the result of the moves that she's made over the years and how these results have therefore become this insidious kind of um thing that has taken root in the foundation of the family and then created this um, negative, these negative family patterns and pathologies that need to be broken. So I thought that was interesting to have her watch everybody's conversation so that she can see how she contributed and not think, I don't know where this came from because this is, this is where the elders will usually be at. They'll say, I don't know where this all came from and absolve themselves from why is everyone acting like this? But everyone is typically the body and the eldest in the line that are still here and still alive are the ones that are reflection that ref that the body reflects they're the head and everything else is a trickle down it's the body and it's the tail because some that how the the kind of um detachment that she her piece also has no filter and detachment on it dorothy's piece um the kind of that detachment and no f is like this thing where people dissociate themselves with the consequences of their actions and so i it's interesting that she she yana had her watch the result of her actions, the generational results of her actions. Um, so everyone has their piece and their different words that represent where they're at right now. And, you know, Dorothy talks about Mark Senior, his, her son, and talks about how she can't tell him anything. And so Iyanla is trying to figure out what she means, Dorothy, what she means, you can't tell him anything. She... And you know she Dorothy just goes into this uh into this story about how well when we first met Jamila, we had just met her, and the next thing you were getting married and um and these people have been married for like eighteen years, and this story of oh, we didn't really know her, but you got married is still a story that's being recounted 18 years later. Okay, you met her a few times and then they got married and it's 18 years later and you're still not over it. So Yana is just trying to find out what's the, the, what's the issue there and is saying there's an issue there because it's 18 years later and it's still coming up. You know, so... Um, and then th there's this back and forth between Dorothy trying to tell different stories about what the problem is with Jamila or what the trouble is, you know. And then Yanla just says, you know, she gets a sense that Mark causes everybody to be on guard whenever he's in the room, Mark Senior. You know, he causes everybody to be on guard and people don't necessarily feel safe to tell him how they truly feel and what is really in their hearts to share. I don't know why that came up, but it came up. The actual conversation about Dorothy is that, you know, for Mark, he got married. 
he, his mother, him and his mother had this inappropriate kind of relationship bond is what he's discovered is that Mark took on the role of the man of the house and very young, you know, earning money, hustling, stealing, robbing, lying, cheating to be able to provide for the home. Um, when it, it became clear that his mother is a single mother. So um, he would bring all this money home and the mother would take it. And so enabled him being the provider of the house, never declined and said, no, I'm the mother and I provide for you. You're 14. I provide for you. You don't provide for me. You don't have to go to the streets. You don't have to hustle to provide for me. I provide for you. Mark did all of this for his mother and his expectation was that his mother would not abandon him, except his mother abandoned him. When she met somebody, uh, they moved to Washington. Um, but he was not allowed to move with them and live with them. So that was something that was traumatic and devastating to Mark because he, he did all kinds of things that dismantled his own integrity to provide for her to bring money to her so that they can be stable financially and then she goes and abandons him in his view she goes and abandons him for a man that she met and eventually married who is still currently her husband so again a family pattern of abandonment comes up um as one of the first things very early on in this first scene that okay there's there's a motherly father you know mother children or parent children abandonment uh patterns that course through this line these generations as well and the abandonment shows up in different ways as well um with each uh member of the family and it and it, it unfolds as the episode goes on Upon finding out about, you know, Mark Jr., he is brought up by Yanla and um, Yanla kind of questions Dorothy, you know, what are your thoughts about Mark Jr.? Where do you stand with him? And, you know, Dorothy says that she wants a relationship with Mark Jr., um, but whenever she calls he doesn't pick up the phone you know whenever she tries to get in contact with him he's not she's not able to get in contact with him and she says are you aware that he walked away from the family dynamic or from the family and dorothy says she is aware so she's like okay um i guess you know then why he's not picking up the phone you know and also what comes up when mark is introduced is the notion of you know this family, this didn't come up last um, episode or even last time that they were here, all two episodes that they were here, but it comes up this time and it comes up where that, you know, this is a family of drunks. There's um, alcoholism that's going, functional alcoholism going through the family or un unaccounted for alcoholism going through the family. And it comes up and that is something that then um, is addressed right at the end of the long episode. Um, but not in a large manner, but in, this, in the sense of Mark Sr. acknowledges that he also has problems with alcohol, with, you know, an overconsumption with it. And that that's obviously something that uh, his son, Mark Jr., got from him. And so when... Um, Jamil at the end makes the request to Mark Jr. just to get into a 12-step program and get a sponsor so that she can, he, he Mark Jr. can get um, a hold of that uh, addiction um, and rein it in and work through his issues and whatever he needs to work through in order such that he doesn't have that kind of um, addiction to deal with. Um, then it, it comes through and then Mark Sr. as well says, look, I will join you in doing that because I also struggle with that. And I recognize that it is something that I want to um, tackle and deal with so that we not having that continue from generation to generation in our family. And that's it. These uh, patterns are literally broken if people are willing and if people lean into 
um, what needs to be done in order for the thing to break. That is just repeating itself from person to person, from generation to generation. It's the willingness to make a different decision um, and change that trajectory into something more constructive, more positive, something um, that is not destructive to the family or people's health throughout the family. Obesity and overeating can be passed on. All kinds of things can be passed on from person to person, from generation to generation. And it takes one person who's willing to to be the antithesis to that and it changes at least for them and if more people who can say hey we also have that problem let's all do it together so that we can break this pattern then it changes literally the trajectory of everyone's life and therefore the next generations to follow that thing that curse that negative pattern gets broken and gets dealt with